And part of it was reflecting on back to these talents and skills that I acquired uh, over the last 15 years, you know, what it was that really stirred me, what I enjoyed doing, what I was good at doing, um, but maybe recognizing that the way that I was using these skills uh, with music were supposed to be used some other way and really tapping into why was music attractive to me? What did I enjoy about it? And it was the creative aspect, of course, but then also just creating something that connected with people and inspired people and digging into that a little bit more. It's like, well, what do I have about my life that's inspiring? I went after a dream and I failed. Like, that's not inspiring. You know, it's, I'm a failure. You know, I moved my whole life to another state, left home, and I have nothing to show for it. Uh, but actually, I had a lot to show for it. I, I had this experience that I gained. And it also helped me realize that there's other people like me. And maybe their dream wasn't music, but maybe they had a dream that didn't quite go like they planned. But they at least they went after it. What I found, Kathleen, is like when you go after something like that, something was like placed on your heart, on your spirit for some reason. There's something there. And you should answer that calling, because even though you may not achieve what you think you, the goal is, when you look back, like you've grown in so many ways. And it's a way that equips you to help other people who are going through different life circumstances. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. The purpose of the show is to help you realize that you are not alone and that you are in control of your life. It doesn't matter where you came from or what the circumstances are. We've all experienced pain, suffering, hurt, abandonment, loneliness, and hopelessness. This show is here to help you turn those dark moments around and create a whole new you. Despite your success, have you felt lonely, angry, frustrated, or even suicidal? Do you long to be supported, recognized, or respected for who you are, not just the awards and accolades on your walls? You don't want to be known, identified, or remembered in a way that feels fraudulent because you achieve things out of obligation and not passion. Do you find yourself sitting quietly at lunch, listening to what lights you up only to feel shame, fear, frustration, and resentment? Your inner turmoil and limiting beliefs surface, making you feel not good enough and afraid of doing something different. You've read the books, attended the seminars, and practiced, practiced new concepts and principles, yet you still find yourself in the same rut. The lies you tell yourself perpetuate a cycle of disappointment. You say you'll change, but your self-limiting beliefs keep you keep running the show, creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. As a certified coach, I empower you to become your authentic self. My Soul Journey program aligns with your true self and guides you to find your soul vision, helping you discover your purpose in life. I provide tools to step into your true magnificence and remember who you are. And if you're interested in learning more, contact me at BraveTV at KathleenMFlanagan.com. I start the show every week with sound and I bring in love, happiness, and balance. And this sets the tone for my guest and myself and for the show. So let's begin. Jeremy is a dynamic and accomplished two-time best-selling author and entrepreneur that has carved a niche as a renowned digital marketing consultant and an inspiring keynote speaker. With a deep-seated passion for empowering individuals and organizations, Jeremy has dedicated his career to helping people maximize their talent and purpose. His personal story of life transformation combined with his engaging speaking style makes him a sought-after expert in the industry. 
Jeremy's profound insights and strategies have inspired countless individuals to unlock their full potential and align their careers with their true purpose. Welcome, Jeremy. Hey, I'm so happy to be here, Kathleen. Thanks for having me on your show today. You're, you are so welcome. It's been a journey to get you here, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I know. How many messages has it taken back and forth between us? But here we are. I know. We finally made it, right? So why don't yeah. you tell our audience a little bit about your journey of becoming an awakening spirit? Yeah, it really started with having a dream in my teenagers. And I don't mean like I fell asleep and had a dream, but you know, we are a teenager and you're like, this is what I want to do with my life. And a lot of teenagers like either don't think about that or they have this really high ambition, which was me. And I wanted to do music. So, you know, like many people in teenage years, you're like, I want to join a band, make music and be a big superstar. Uh, so followed that passion and ended up I'm from Oklahoma originally and ended up moving into to Atlanta when I was 20 years old to pursue a music career uh, with a friend of mine and went through you know we performed pretty much everywhere in atlanta saved up some money got a studio in the apartment uh we're recording in our apartment the entry closet was our vocal booth and you know fast forward and it was just really hard to break in the industry and we got close enough to the industry where it kind of lost its appeal you saw the good the bad the ugly and it just seemed more like a job that i that kind of sucked all the passion out of me so trying to figure out what to do with my life now because i was almost 30 years old at that time and like i put the the last 15 years of my life into this so and this is what i thought my life was going to be so what do i do now and went through this period of just kind of being lost i guess trying to rediscover who i was what made me tick and in a sense trying to reawaken my spirit because there was certainly the spirit that was alive with me that the creativity produced from writing and producing and performing music and i lost all that so trying to rediscover myself and on the other side of that which i'm sure we'll unpack more in this combo is i've really tapped into who i am and wrote a book about it and now i get a lot of joy in life helping other people really tap into their talents and purpose Okay, so we are going to unpack this. <laughs> yeah. Totally unpack it. So the question that I have, before you wrote the book, you obviously were on a journey and you had to do some deep soul searching. And here yeah. you are in Atlanta. <clears throat> you lost everything in your mind as far as where you wanted to go. You probably mm -hmm. thought you were wandering aimlessly for a while. So what yeah. were the steps that you took to find where you are today yeah i think for one it was like recognizing that whatever this journey that i thought it was going to be realizing that that's not what it is but at the same time like i'm still alive i'm still breathing so i'm still here for a purpose and a reason and, and i wasn't really sure what that was so on, in some respects just having to take a beat you know and sit back reevaluate i ended up going back to school um i graduated undergrad uh, with marketing in my early 20s but went back to school got my master's degree and actually through that whole process met some new cool fun interesting people uh, but also did a lot of work on myself there were a lot of assessments we had to take um fortunately in this program it was very unique in that every student in this cohort had a personal coach who really helped coach me up and bring things out of me and Part of it was reflecting on back to these talents and skills that I acquired uh, over the last 15 years, you know, what it was that really stirred me, what I enjoyed doing, what I was good at doing, um, but maybe recognizing that the way that I was using these skills uh, with music were supposed to be used some other way and really tapping into why was music attractive to me? What did I enjoy about it? And it was the creative aspect, of course. But then also just creating something that connected with people and inspired people and digging into that a little bit more it's like well what do i have about my life that's inspiring i went after a dream and i failed like that's not inspiring you know it's i'm a failure you know i moved my whole life to another state left home and i have nothing to show for it uh, but actually i had a lot to show for it i had this experience that i gained in it also helped me realize that there's other people like me and maybe their dream wasn't music, but maybe they had a dream that didn't quite go like they planned. 
but they at least they went after it. What I found, Kathleen, is like when you go after something, like that something was like placed on your heart, on your spirit for some reason. There's something there. And you should answer that calling because even though you may not achieve what you think you, the goal is, when you look back, like you've grown in so many ways and it's a way that equips you to help other people who are going through different life circumstances. I totally agree with that because I started, when I got out of the legal profession, I uh, yeah. went into aromatherapy. Okay, what did I know mm -hmm. about it? I, aromatherapy yeah. wasn't even a word yet in this country. Yeah but it was coming in. I mean, we had herbal me uh, medicines and things like that. And, and I look back on, you know, people could say, well, you never really got the business off the ground. You never launched. I mean, you're a failure, whatever. And it's like, no, it's still sitting in my basement mm -hmm. and it's hibernating because I had to do more work on me. I mean, this was a beautiful yeah. way. I mean, awakening spirit. Hello. I was walking into what it meant to awaken. Yeah. Yes. And when you're, when you're doing following a dream, like you did, we do that. And we, and then sometimes the rose colored glasses come off because mm -hmm. like you said that you got too close to the business that you're like, wait a minute, this isn't what I thought this was supposed to be. Yeah. I don't, that doesn't align with how I feel on the inside. And mm -hmm. so when I did the awakening spirit, I mean, it, yeah, it's still down there. I still love my company, but yeah. my messaging, what I've, I've learned over these last several years, because I've reinvented myself, it's the core of who I am still comes through. Yes. My messaging mm -hmm. has always been about self-empowerment. It's about, mm -hmm. you know, remembering who are you? Go back to a simpler period of time. I mean, I don't even say that now, but I'm mm -hmm. going, wait a minute, I need to bring that back because yeah. our life is getting more complex. And I thought it was complex, what, 30, 40 years ago? <laughs> oh, no. right. You know what I mean? Well, 20 years ago. Yep. And, and now it's more complex. So it's like diving back further. So talk a little bit about more of like what came out of and having a coach. Oh, wow. What a gift that was it at 30 yeah. years old. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. coaches weren't even a thing really back then. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was one thing that attracted me to this particular program. Um, and shout out to uh, David Pellthorpe. That's who my coach was. Um, but now with him, it was a combination of just, I had all this stuff in my mind, like all these things that I wanted to do. And even when I talk to people kind of a little bit about my journey and I describe where I was, like a lot of people, it resonates because like, oh, that's me. You know, I have so many ideas. Like I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And there, and a lot of times the, this is that you want to do are in totally separate directions. So it's mm -hmm. like, how can you accomplish a B and C, if they're the amount of time and energy and expertise that you need in all three of these, like you just don't have the bandwidth to do it. Um, so one thing that was helpful for me was prioritizing these. And this is kind of what I was coached through. And even with the program, we had, we had to journal and do all this stuff. Um, and a story that I have is I was writing a journal, like listing all these things that I want to do. And there was a professor who, when he gave this assignment back, had like all these red lines through it and was like, uh, set an appointment to meet with me. And I'm like, oh man, I, I, I'm in trouble now. You know, <laughs> so I set an appointment and I go and I meet with this professor and he's like, I want to talk about what you put in your journal about your goals. And I'm like, okay. And you know, he, he, he was honest with me and he said, there's no way that you're going to be able to accomplish all of these things. And I'm like, oh, I'm taken aback. Like, what do you mean? Of course I can accomplish it. You know, I'm positive mindset. If you put your mind to it, you can do anything. And he's like, I, I probably had like 30 different things down there. He's like, number one, I don't think you're going to live long enough to accomplish all these. And number two, you have no plan at all. You're just listing all the things you want to do. He said, what I would advise you to do, and now this is what I advise people to do because it was really helpful to me, is when you look at all the different things that you want to do, start prioritizing those and which ones are the most important and that may be based off of what which ones you can do the fastest so if you have like four goals and you're like this one may take six years this one may take three months like try to knock out that that short one the one that takes three months go after that um if you have a couple of competing goals that maybe have a the same amount of time and duration maybe they're both like two three years 
like which one of those is most important to you? Which one stirs you the most? And put all your energy into that one. Give yourself a timeline, which is super crucial. Like if you don't give yourself a timeline, you're just going to keep going after it year after year after year. Uh, meanwhile, your other goals that are waiting, none of those are even being touched. So give yourself a timeline. And when that time comes, either you've accomplished it or you haven't. And if you have not accomplished it, evaluate it and say, how close am I? Like if I think this is going to take another two years, maybe it's time to just sunset this goal and move on to the next one. And then you at least have some peace about it and you've gone after it, you've given it your best. And now let's take that one off the table and move to the next one. Uh, so that was one of the things that helped me awaken and, and really transform and, and help pivot my life to what I'm doing now is just getting a handle on what I wanted to do and prioritizing how I wanted to do that. I think that's very sound advice because when I was doing mine, I mean, I had so many different things coming at me, like you were saying, and mm. some things, you know, it was, you kind of like deviate because it's like, where's this idea coming from? Cause you're thinking, well, is spirit giving this to me or am I creating it? But I think what it was and having to understand like what you were saying was I didn't have that coach. So I had to decide that for myself. Is this yeah. going to get me to my end goal? Yes or no. Sometimes you go down the rabbit hole for a little bit and then it's like, well, that's not working. Come back and switch gears. But how I looked at it was it was leading me to where I am today. And sometimes we don't notice that. And I think yeah. when we when we can acknowledge that we weren't lost or we took a side track, it really was to enhance where we're going in the future. So we're gonna go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Are you ready to step into your true potential? Kathleen Flanagan's Get Into Alignment session helps you break through blocks, balance your energy, and align with your highest self. Experience clarity, purpose, and flow like never before. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and unlock the power of living in alignment today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we have Jeremy Hasselwood in the room with us today. So, Jeremy, since yes. you did music and mm -hmm. you're now a marketing guy, how did mm -hmm. you incorporate all of that part of you and that learning from music into marketing and your coaching? Because it's very diverse. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. know that we have to marry ourselves, so to speak. So I want to know what you did to marry that into where you are. And then how did it look from the beginning and mm. how it's where it is today? Like that journey of that self-discovery. Yeah. I mean, the marketing and music were always in me. And from the time I started music, I was marketing the music. Um, in fact, when I the reason well not the reason i went to college but going to college like my degree is in marketing because i wanted to learn business and i wanted to learn how to market my music because part of my goal was become an artist have a record label or music production company and put out other artists but also knowing how to market because i mean i was in high school and i was recording i saved up money and busting tables on the weekends and was in a recording studio and actually put out a cassette way back in the day kids don't know what cassettes are today but cassettes uh <laughs> put that out when i was in in high school and i had to market it you know so i'm marketing and selling kind of interchangeable uh, so as i uh, began my academic journey in college like that's what it was i minored in music industry and when my company ample marketing i've had it for over 10 years and it's just really like the evolution of who i've always been i'm always whether it's music or a, a good album or a good show that I've seen, like I want to be the one to tell, put people onto new ideas and new concepts and new products and services without being salesy. Cause to me, marketing, yes, there's sales and marketing, but you're really introducing or you're further building a relationship with someone about a product or service. And to me, it's exciting to turn somebody on to something that I know that they're going to like. So if it's even back, like, I don't know, all the time growing up, I was always, putting my friends onto new music groups like, hey, you're going to like this and I'd make mixtapes and people would love it. So what I'm doing now is just an evolution of Jeremy as a 15 year old. Um, my, my business, there was certainly 
it wasn't always to have a marketing company, which is what I have now. Uh, but that kind of came through that period <clears throat> when the music ended and trying to figure out what to do next. I'm like, I enjoy marketing. Um, I also do a lot of work with nonprofits and there's a lot of gratification there. So it's like, okay, I, I enjoy marketing. I have this background in music, but really it's a background in marketing a product or services, creating content, building relationships, how to build out whole campaigns. And I enjoy doing that. Like I have a talent to do that. And now I can use it purposefully with nonprofits and small and medium sized businesses to help do more good in the world. So, you know, Ample Marketing started 10 years ago as a result of a job loss from a marketing agency. It's like, I love that work so much. It's like, I want to keep doing this. So whether someone hires me or not, like, I want to make sure that this is part of what my life looks like. Okay. So, so how did that evolve into the transformational work that you're doing, getting on stages? Because again, here's another pivot that's coming along in your life was yeah. that part of losing that job, part of that pivotal change, or did that come afterwards? Yeah, the piece now, and, and it's the line that I straddle now was having the marketing company running a consultancy, but now also, I don't even necessarily want to say pivot. It's almost like this has always been the plan from the beginning is to do life changing work and life transformational work. So yes, I run my, my company and there's good that I'm doing in the world through the company. I'm helping businesses and nonprofits do more good. But on the flip side, me personally working with um, organizations or speaking or writing books that can personally transform individuals like when you've done and you know this because this is the work that you do as well like it only takes a couple of times to have these conversations and coach with someone and for them to get that aha moment and to see that spark that you can light in somebody and see their life turn around and whether or not they acknowledge it or not like you know that somehow you had something to do with them transforming and, and doing better in their life and finding that joy and passion in their life and like for me it's like that that is like currency for me that is fuel for me is having those conversations whether it's a coaching session or whether it's just a friend or stranger and putting hope into people putting you know uh, affirming and encouraging and when people are beating themselves up being that one voice maybe that they can hear that says you know what you can do this like you got this and it's like really because the self-talk is so prevalent in the head it's like sometimes you need that outside person to just come in and silence it and give you that courage and that strength to move forward. So, yeah, so that journey doing it is it's been on my radar to do for a while. But now I'm at a point where I can't wait when you have a gift in life. Like you got to activate that. You can't keep waiting on the right time to do it. It's never the right time. You just have to take those steps and move forward with it. I find that very true because I've I've just watched my own evolution over the years and I feel like I'm on a super accelerated place since this year and it's only going to launch even further next year because of all yeah. the things that I'm doing and yeah. staying, keeping this under control, becoming mm -hmm. in alignment with myself and the more aligned I become, the stronger my message gets. Oh, yeah. And yep. the thing that I've noticed also is that, and it's what you said, is that this has always been a part of me. I have mm -hmm. always said this my whole life. I've watched myself say the same thing yeah. over and over again, but not knowing how to bring it out into the world to help right. people or to make money. And then I had to work through my own personal traumas. And as I was on a call and it's like, I'm no longer Swiss cheese, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, because now I'm whole and because I'm whole, I can bring it out. And if somebody's pointing back at me, it's not me, it's that I'm, they're full of holes. So the light is yeah. coming in to penetrate. And I love what she said that, that, you know, I used to be Swiss cheese and now I'm whole. Yeah. And I think, we, you know, as long as we try to like keep life light, I mean, cause life can be difficult, but I think mm -hmm. it's about the joy and and I know you got to still be playing music. I'm sure you're still doing that for people. I don't know if it's in business or if it's events you do, but I mean, I'm sure that inspires people to come and talk to you more. So tell us a little bit about more about how your music is incorporated in what you're doing. 
Yeah, it's funny because when I walked away from music, like I I was like, you know what, I can make music when I'm 90 years old if I want to. And there's many other things that I have talents at and let me try to pursue those. So I sold all my studio equipment except for this microphone that I'm talking to you on now. And then if you can see in the background, these these speakers, like those were in my studio, everything else was gone. And honestly, like I haven't I haven't made a single song in, gosh, yeah, 15 ish years. But I still have this creative spirit about me. And I recently actually launched a podcast uh, a couple weeks ago. And season one is about digital fundraising for nonprofits. But I had fun with it because I'm like, I want to create like my theme song, you know, like I think about to like sitcoms or like shows and you've got like this theme song. So I was like, I'm going to dust off the mic. I'm going to write just a little something, put some music together. And I enjoyed that. Um, so I when I look back, I don't I don't miss the music industry like I, I do miss the creative aspects of it sometime. But at the same time, like I'm really happy with where my life is like i i'm so filled up with joy from the work that i'm doing to a sense where it it has replaced and almost dimmed the light on what i did musically and i'm i enjoyed music like obviously it caused me to leave home when i was 20 years old so that's never going to leave me um and again i can still make music when i'm 90 but now i'm like how can i use my talents to something that is more purposeful that i still get fulfillment off of um one thing that I think about is like when people, um, you know, when you have this, it, it, it's like you said, what people don't really know what they're capable of unless they really sit down and do the work. And when you do the work on yourself, when you do, whether it's coaching or uh, assessments and you can identify these different aspects to yourself, when you're making goals and, and setting out on your journey, you don't really have the clarity of your life that you would if you did the work, because what I've found is when you know who you are and what your journey is, it helps you to say yes to a lot of things and no to a lot of things, which is why maybe those 30 things that I had on the list when I was in grad school of what I wanted to do, I could probably look at that list now and be like, I don't, I only want to do like four of these because the rest of these, <laughs> they don't really align with who I am or what I want to be, you know, and that's the clarity that you get. Um, and it sounds like you might be similar to me in that you you might see opportunities or you might have friends that come up to you and say, hey, I've got this idea here, or this idea here. And they may be good ideas. And earlier, Jeremy, who didn't really understand what my path was, may have said yes and devoted time to that, which would have taken me further from my purpose. But now I can say, hey, that's a good idea. It's just not for me. But I wish you all the best in that. And if you ever want to talk about it, about some ideas, I can help you with that. But I'm for my journey, that's not where I am right now. Well, I just want you to know, you're going to get a little reading here that you're going back into music one way or another. <laughs> okay. Um, Kathleen um, said it's, it. It's coming in. It's coming in. I, I, All right. I mean, if you could have seen how your eyes lit up when you talked about yeah. music, mm -hmm. that is still very much a, a passion inside of you. And yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. Mm -hmm. So I know spirits really yeah. talking. Um, yeah. you're going to find a way to bring that in and have this whole new joy about you that mm -hmm. you don't even know yet. Yeah. Like more of that I'm... little childlike kid coming back out mm -hmm. to play, you know, a way to just incorporate all of you in, in such a beautiful orchestra is yeah. what I'm getting. So I, I see it coming because there's too much of your music that lights mm -hmm. you up and yeah. you're just, no, it's not bringing me joy. And it's like, but it does bring you joy and you yeah. need to stop denying that part. Hey, Get back you know, and play I, that guitar or your drums no. or whatever it is you play. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I will receive that. I can tell you this, like looking back and the reason I light up so much about it is because, I mean, outside of like my wedding day, like I've never been so happy and free in my whole life than just being in the studio with musicians working on like something that nobody in the world has ever heard before. And we're creating it on the spot and the passion of the musicians that you're around. We just want to make art. And like, I haven't found anything in my life like that ever period. So that feeling is there. Um, what I've discovered too, is that it was a passion, but not a purpose. And I talk a lot about that in my book too. It's like, but what I do say is like, I followed my passion and found my purpose. 
So I think, again, if it wasn't for the music, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Um, I think I, I could end up in a recording studio again one day. I'm not, I will receive your reading. Um, and it's hard to, you know, there's also nostalgia with that because it was like a really fun young time of my life. Just like, it was amazing. And, you know, I live that in different ways now, but yeah, nothing can replicate that feeling for sure. Well, and I just know that you're going to write your little theme song for your podcast. I think that's <laughs> when the bug's going to come in and bite you. <laughs> bite yeah, you yeah. good buddy it's gonna bite yeah. you good and good i think mind. it's gonna and i think it's gonna be beautiful because i think it, what i'm getting is there's going to be a trajectory that's going to ca catapult you to a place that you don't know but it's going to mm. bring more of you out into the world you're going to become yeah. more in alignment with yourself which then mm. helps you to understand the grander purpose and I think mm -hmm. that's where a lot of people are going right now with the changes that are coming in on the planet. And we're talking a lot more than political here. Yeah. Yep. That this is a part time for our, each and every one of us to embrace every element of who we are, the good, the bad, mm -hmm. the ugly. We just have to embrace it because it's who we are and it, there's nothing wrong or bad about it. It's just what it is. And we have to stop yeah. those judgments and where yeah. does our creative forces come from? And sometimes mm. it comes from that darkness. Sometimes it comes from playing. I mean, I get a lot of joy out of dancing. I, have I danced mm. in a while? No, but I'm yeah. going to go back to it. I know I uh, will. Yeah, and yeah. because, I miss it. And there's that childlike and the creativity that comes from play. And that's yeah. what I know you get from music. So there's mm -hmm. more play joyful because I think our world needs to know how to play again. Yeah. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because like in my phone, I've got like a whole, I've got an album title. I've got the songs. They just haven't been created yet. So I've got concepts, concepts of an album as as it goes <laughs> i love that i absolutely love that i'm going to say we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break because i know we're supposed to yep. be at that point and i haven't seen yep. anything so we'll do that for now and we'll come back yep. all right okay maybe we're not going to take a commercial break i think i lost yep. the engineer that's the okay. I guess gone? we lost the engineer. Um, <laughs> okay, oh, he's going to go. take us on a break. <laughs> Feeling overwhelmed? Take a moment to reconnect with your inner peace. Join Kathleen Flanagan's powerful de-stress meditation designed to help you release tension, calm your mind, and restore balance. Just a few minutes can transform your day. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and start your journey to tranquility today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we have Jeremy Hasselwood in the room with us today. If somebody hires you, mm. what is the first thing you do? Because you say you work on the personal development, but you also do the marketing. So what does that yeah. look like if I came to you and said, I have this idea, what do I need to do? Yeah, well, that that's... That's actually the interesting question is really, what what do you need? Do you need the personal development or do you need the marketing with the product or service? Because those are two very different conversations. Um, I think probably for the purposes of your of our podcast here, it'd be more like from the personal development. Like, so we would sit down and like, I'll do an introductory call, but I do have a, a 12 week coaching program as well that's based on the steps of my book. And it's also something where I would need to qualify you and make sure that you're a good fit for the program, you know, quite honestly, because you have to do the work and you'll be accountable to do the work. You do have to invest money in it and there's, there's no money back. So it's like, you have to be in this for the long haul. Like don't waste your time. Don't waste my time. It's not going to be easy. Um, but I believe that the people who really want that change in life, they're going to do whatever it takes to, to get to that next level. There's a reason that you're reaching out to me or to a coach to seek that change. So for me, it's understanding like where they are now, what brought them to this point, um, and then mapping out that path to, to get them to point B, where they're trying to get at the end of all of this. So talk about um, your course a little bit. 
Yeah, so the course is based on uh, the book, Finding Your Edge, How to Unlock Your Talent and Purpose. And the course is uh, Edge Academy is like my umbrella that I use for my curriculum. So I have a, a self-paced online course, but that's not really the, the coaching piece. But with the online course, like each week we're, we're going through different principles of the book and you'll have homework each week, which is another thing too. It's like, it's not, this is not a counseling session. I'm not a counselor. So we're not just going to do counseling and then see you next week. Like you're going to have homework and there's a curriculum and you're going to be expected to come back next week and have the answers to everything because we're going to talk through the answers. We're going to uh, like, for example, the first part of it is uh, eliminating distractions because when you're doing life transformation work, you need to take inventory of where your focus is right now. And a lot of times, and it's been the case for me. And even now, like I still have, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm human being just like you. I'm just maybe a little further down the path, but there's people further down the path than I am. So every now and then I'll have issues with distractions. I think the main one is for me, it's my cell phone. So for you, it's like, what is yours? Um, and why, why is that distraction there? What is it taking you away from? Um, and, but it's not just technology. It could be like, food it could be people in your life you know so naming those distractions because a lot of times we're not even aware of them like we're just kind of in this sea of distraction that we never really agreed to jump in we're just there floating around um so identifying what those distractions are and then uh discovering yourself so uh there's a series of questions and assessments that i'll have uh, people that i coach take and we'll go over those results and point out the insights and and that helps to build that emotional intelligence and really pinpointing some of the characteristics about ourselves that maybe we didn't realize, like we knew we were this way, but we weren't aware of it, but we also didn't know what to call it. Like when you know what to call it and what that label is, like, that's actually a good thing. You know, a lot of people don't like labels in general, like don't call me this, don't label me as that. But sometimes we need those labels because it helps us identify what the strengths are of that label and also what the liabilities are of that label. So walk through that, then we generate goals based on this new sense of self that we have, based on the clarity that we have and the focus that we have. And then we put a plan together to really enact discipline to go after those new goals and that new life that you're chasing after. So, I mean, those are kind of the four pillars. So edge, like finding your edge is eliminate distractions, discover yourself, generate goals and enact discipline. So it's a, an acronym, but it's also the model for the coaching and it's the, the model I teach in the book. Well, that that's really good because how many people, I mean, they're not present. I mean, that's the main thing. They're not present. If you're not present, how do you know where you are? You need to know where point A is to get to point B. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you a lot know? of times you don't know where point A, you're standing here, but you don't recognize, like, tell me what point A is. You just, right. because you're so consumed and distracted and right. there's chaos, your mind is not there's no intent there. So yeah, that's hundred percent true. Right. And when I, and then as you went on, I'm looking at as far as being present mm -hmm. and becoming conscious, we know that that's going to start doing a lot of head trash. That's going to come up because you're going to start, things are going to start shifting and changing and that becomes uncomfortable. And then the, yeah. what I found also with people a lot of times is they don't know how, they're feeling. They don't know how to identify it. So when you said emotional consciousness, I think it was. Um, intelligence. Yeah. Uh, emotional intelligence. Intelligence. That's the word. Mm -hmm. um, because we, most people don't. And I remember when I was younger, people, it's like, well, what do you feel? I don't know. I don't know what this yeah. feeling is. Because when we're younger, we don't know what we're feeling. And mm -hmm. I really dived into that in my life of like, yeah. well, what is I mean, I could understand anger, but I may not have understood depression. I may not have understood um, melancholy, you know, things like mm -hmm. that. So, I mean, these are words that were didn't make sense, but now yeah. I can understand that. So when I say, well, I've, it's almost like a melancholy kind of feeling, like I'm having a melancholy Monday. Yeah. <laughs> That, like, that you're just kind of like Monday. not there, like everything is okay yeah. and you know it's okay, but there's like something underneath it that is like, well, just yeah. sit and be with it. And yeah. giving permission to be oh, okay gosh. with where you are. Yeah. I mean, classic example of that, something recently in my life, my dog passed away about four weeks ago. Oh, and my sweet. dog was 16. 
she was like, I don't know. It's weird to say this animal is my best friend because it's a dog. And I've lost dogs when I was a kid, but not as an adult. And like I work from home. So she's with me from the time I open my eyes to the time I close them. And I struggled a lot more than I thought I would um, when she passed away. And I remember like week two of like grieving over it. Like I would just have these moments in the day and I would, you know, talk to my wife about it. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm so mad at myself that I'm like still grieving about this dog. Like, and she's like, it's okay though. Like I know, but in my mind, I feel like I'm better than this. You know, I shouldn't still have this grief. Like I'm sad, but it's time to move on. It's time to, okay, she's gone. Can't bring her back. It is what it is. I'm sad, but I'll move on. But just these moments of like, just this sharp grief that would hit me and I, it would throw me off and I would just be really mad at myself and like, Oh, why am I? Oh, I shouldn't feel this way. I'm better than this. But I had to just have grace for myself too. And be like, man, you just lost your dog who really has been a companion that showed you unconditional love for 16 years. Like it's okay. Like you're going to be sad about this. And I'm much better now than I was, but just giving myself permission and I say that for me, just like to your listeners, like if you're feeling a certain way, man, just lean into it. You know, like man, I had to have a few good cries over my dog. Like, let me just cleanse, you know, like I'm really sad, like, and it's okay to be sad about it, you know? And the, the thing that what's not okay is to stay there. You know, you take as long as you need, take as long as you need. And I, and I can't tell you what that looks like, but no, in your mind, know that this is a time period and there is life beyond this grief. And we, we got to pick ourselves up eventually and honor uh, the loss in your life or honor whatever it was that didn't go the way you wanted it. But know that you're still here and know that we, we've got to pick ourselves up and keep moving. I, I agree with that. I know when my mother died, um, it hit me harder than I ever thought it would. And I knew mm -hmm. it, I would get hit, but I didn't yeah. expect that I couldn't get out of bed hit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and the the grief and the depression was so intense of this loss. Mm -hmm. And I was estranged from my mother in the end, but it didn't matter. It was so yeah. incredibly intense. And I was getting my nails done in this one woman that I came to know. <clears throat> she um she I was there, I think I was like the next appointment or something, and she was there and I knew her, and she was a psychologist. Mm -hmm. And she was like, How you doing? Mm -hmm. I have my moments, you know, I have yeah. good days. I have bad days. And she said, and, but this was like right at the onset of the, the grief. And I think the nail tech yeah. told her what had happened. And okay. she said, just get out of bed. That's mm -hmm. all you have to do. Just get out of bed. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah, I think I can do that. Good. Mm -hmm. Then once you get out of bed, get dressed or mm -hmm. take a shower and get dressed kind of thing. And right. can you do that? It's like, yeah. And so what she did is she taught me how that it was okay where I was at mm -hmm. and baby steps. So it's like what you yeah. said, I had to give myself grace. I wasn't mm -hmm. beating myself up because I was so incredibly depressed in yeah. pain. And then I knew that if I had to go to work, like I it was like one day I'd go to work, the next day I was home, then I go to work. And it was like, I could be yeah. up for a day. And the next day I was down in the dumps. And I yeah. talked to my sister and she said she, it was just as hard for her, but she had to go to work all the time. I mean, it was like yeah. the, the way we went through our grieving processes were so mm -hmm. different because I thought, well, maybe if I was at work all the time, it'd be easier, but it wasn't. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that gentleness, I had to develop that as we all do, because I mean, I used to be a drill sergeant to myself. What's wrong <laughs> yeah, yeah, with yeah. you? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and does anybody work when you got a drill sergeant after you? No. no so, no. you know, so I know what it's like to lose a pet. I had my cat when she mm -hmm. died. I still cry to this day yeah, that she yeah. left me because it was so there. And, and what I always tell people, you know, sometimes, you know, be in it. You got to be in it. You got to mm -hmm. allow it because it's part of your heart's opening and grief to yeah. bring more love in. Mm -hmm. And, also, when you're doing that, if you're feeling like an angst or a fear or a terror, just breathe into it, you know, because in mm -hmm. 90 seconds, it'll be gone in 90 seconds. Yeah. Grief is a different story. And that's an animal that most people don't want to touch on. But it's right. one that people you just need to just be there and allow them to be there. 
and I thought the way that woman handled me of, can you just get out of bed? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was one minor thing, but that was so, that was my way of coming back to the world. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's like, that's where the hope is. You know, it's like when you yes. grieve, um, whether you find the resources or the resources find you, it's like you're going through it. And there is another side beyond that grief where you have kind of this appreciation for the loss, for your mother, for my dog, for people that we've lost in our lives. But now your resilience and how you coped, you know, hopefully was not destructive, how you cope no. in positive ways, you know, and I don't mean you personally, yeah, um, I know. but just, you know, when, when you cope with grief in, in positive ways that are not destructive ways, you can now share that with somebody else. Because what I, I did find is when I've told people about my dog that passed away, Callie, um, people that lost animals, like they understood it more. And for them, it was a time for them to share about their little furry friend that they lost. So in a way, you know, you're you being a part of the overcoming of grief can help other people, even if it's months or years later, because they get to kind of reflect and think back about this love that they had in their life that is no longer existing on this earth. So, yeah, we don't talk about grief enough because it's such a sensitive subject, but we're all going to go through it. And I'd rather be equipped to go through it and have someone tell me, just get out of bed, you know, than to just yeah. sit in bed and you're just become a victim to it and you can't function. Well, and so many people say, just get over it because right. if they haven't lost a loved one or a parent and they're so mm -hmm. harsh because yeah. it's their insecurity because they don't know how to deal with what happened. And then yeah. when they lose their parent, then they'll come back and say, I am so sorry for how I treated you kind yeah. of thing. And, yeah. and I think that's people just need to let that go because I always would sit with people when they were in grief. I mean, I felt helpless, but mm -hmm. when I, when people sat with me, I would sit for people and then they sat with me and it was like, I understand what I, the gift I gave people when I didn't even have a concept of what that meant of just sitting and being with them and allowing yeah. them to just express. And yeah. so when it happened to me, it was like, oh my God, I thank you. God, that I had enough wherewithal to just allow somebody to be in that place because they all came back and said, just thank you so much for just being there. Thank you yeah. for not saying anything. Thank you for letting me just express. And I said, well, what else mm -hmm. could I do? You're hurting. And yeah. I wanted to help you. And that's the only way I knew how to help, you know? That's a rare person. I'll give you that. That's a rare person that I did <laughs> yeah. because that's not yeah. what people do. Right. But, but the thing that I think the most was when people were showing compassion that understood that made a big difference. And I think that's mm -hmm. part of where humanity needs to come back is mm -hmm. that compassion. And Gosh, I think yeah. with when you do that work on yourself, that's where the compassion comes back. I mean, that's, you mm. understand that there's an empathy about you because you know your journey. Yeah. I mean, it's like living life more, experiencing different things in life. Um, because also when you're going through grief, you do feel very isolated and very alone. Um, you feel like this freak of nature because you're in such a bad state and everybody else around you seems to be fine. But what you don't know is that they're carrying around grief as well from their their own losses that they've experienced in life and they understand you and it's okay. You're not some strange, weird person. You're just a person that's grieving and it's going to be okay. You know, so we beat up on ourselves so much, even I, I did with the loss of mine. Um, so, you know, at the crux of it, at the end of the day, it's like, you're going to be okay. You know, just, I, I like the advice you were given, uh, which is get out of bed. Oh, <laughs> speaking of pets. Yeah, this is, this is Marco. He's my little orange cat that nobody likes. We're having problems integrating, but he's, he's lonely. Yeah. But yeah, he's a good boy though. So Jeremy, tell people how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, sure. You can go to my website, uh, which is jeremyhazelwood.com. Um, also, if you uh, are business, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can go to my website as well. Uh, but I think I'm the only Jeremy Hazelwood on there. And it's H-A-S-E-L-W-O-O-D. Um, and also Instagram, like I post content really that's 
um, kind of purpose driven and uplifting, optimistic. If you're tired of seeing the toxic, negative things in your feed, come, come follow me. I'll show you something good. that's going to lift you up. And that's Jeremy.Hazewood on Instagram. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Jeremy. I really appreciate it. I know we ended up on a little bit of a, a downer moment, but it's not it's not oh. downer at all. It really mm -hmm. is about um, the more we, work we do, yeah. the more light we shine, yes. the greater our influence out in the world is, whatever that is. And just because mm -hmm. he's in marketing and I'm doing whatever I'm doing, we all still go through things and that's it's it. all the support we need to just get through us on the other side. And that's the beauty of it. So, and yeah. you're a prime example of how you beat yourself up over a dog. And yeah, she was your, she was part of your life. You know, yeah. it's okay. We're, we're, we're human. We love our animals. That's it. Yeah. And I thank you for the, the space to talk about it. It was, it was a conversation that was meant to be for this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And I really do appreciate your willingness to go down a road mm -hmm. that I know we didn't talk about. Not that we did talk about it, but that, mm -hmm. you know, I like the show to flow where it needs to mm -hmm. go. Yeah. And I appreciate your willingness to do that. Sure. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And if you found any value here, I would love it if you would like or subscribe to the channel. Um, and and also give the link to your friends and family and that way you'll be notified of any updates and any new uh, any new episodes and if you're struggling with anything that we talked about today feel free to reach out to me at kathleen at can't at brave tv at kathleen m flanagan or you can even reach out to jeremy i'll have all of his contact information up on the website so you will be able to get a hold of him there my books dancing souls the call the dark night of the soul and awakened are available on amazon.com plus kathleenmflanagan.com feel free to visit kathleenmflanagan.com for a list of services and products that i offer and you also have access to the three minute de-stress meditation which is absolutely free to you no email is required you can go to awakeningspirit.com for a 40% discount and grandmasnaturalremedies.net for a 20% discount by entering Brave TV into the coupon code. And that concludes our show for the day for today. And I will see you all next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.